guys can see up on the screen today, I want to talk a little bit about Grab Holdings Limited Class A Ordinary Shares. This is ticker symbol G-R-A-B, Grab. And uh, yeah, this thing was just an absolute disaster today. You guys can see on the screen, down 20.5% in a single day. That is really, really crazy. I mean, this is in a day where... You know, even in a week, this whole week, last couple of weeks, market's been very, very volatile. You know, there's new variants. There's, um, you know, all this fear in the market. People are talking, people talking about things being overvalued. People talking about buying dips on stuff. Yada, yada, yada. Uh, but today, the market was relatively flat. You know, the S and P's down a quarter of a percent. Dow's down 0.1 percent. Nasdaq's down a third of a percent. Um, you know, yeah, some volatility here and there. But overall, not a terrible day in the market. So to be down 20 and a half percent, almost. 20 21% in a single day. Uh, definitely not a great sign for grab. Uh, so I want to talk about that in this video. Obviously, drop a like if you guys do enjoy it. I would appreciate it so, so much. And subscribe to today and all my latest content. With that being said, let's get right into this. Um, so what exactly happened with grab? What's going on? Why is this thing down 20% in a single day? So uh, a part of the story is that this company is newly uh, on the market. You know, this was a SPAC deal that got done. Um, and here's the story from CNBC. SoftBank backed grab falls more than 20% in the first day of trading following the largest ever SPAC merger. You know, the obviously SPACs have been uh, a large part of the story over the last like two years at this point in the stock market, I guess. Um, there have been some successful ones. I want to say uh, many of them are much less successful than are more successful. You know, that like SPACs have been very, very risky, very, very volatile. And yeah, there have been some people that have made some money, maybe getting in and out of stuff quick. But for the large part, if you look at all the SPACs over the last year or two as a whole, I think most of them have lost money, and I think most of them have actually lost money, you know, fairly quickly. Uh, obviously, they've gone through periods of really booming, and, and especially when the market was way, way, way more speculative than it was now, uh, and way, way, way looking for hype and growth and all that stuff. That's not really, really where we're at this point, you know, late in 2021, but... The largest ever SPAC merger, you know, maybe this one would be a different story. Um, so Grab began trading on the NASDAQ on Thursday, becoming the largest ever company to close a SPAC merger and go public. Uh, shares tumbled more than 20% following a deal that valued the four-time CNBC Disruptor 50 company at nearly $40 billion. I mean, that is crazy. Most of these SPACs that we see, I would say, are between like the $1 and $5 billion range. Yeah, you get some crazy big ones every once in a while, but most of the time it's even under a billion. Um, you know, it's a lot of kind of shady, skeptical, small, early days companies, whatever, that for whatever reason don't want to go through the IPO process, want to hit market as soon as they can, uh, whether it's because they want to cash out, whether it's because they see an awesome opportunity, or whether, you know, this is just the way they decided to go if they think this is ultimately the best deal for them. I don't know. Um, but yeah, this is where we're at. Uh, the Southeast Asian ride hailing giant merged with Ultimeter. I don't know why I couldn't say that. Growth Corp, the blank check firm led by Ultimeter Capital founder and CEO Brad Gerstner. Um, so the Southeast Asian ride hailing company or giant grab fell sharply on its first day trading on the NASDAQ after becoming the largest ever company to close a SPAC deal and go public. Shares opened the trading day at 1306 under the ticker symbol GRAB following the deal with Ultimeter Growth Corp uh, that valued the four times CNBC disruptor 50 company at nearly 40 billion dollars. Dollars um, again opening at 1306. Where are we at right now? Uh, we closed at 875 today after hours. Hey, we're up three percent. Maybe things are turning around. Maybe we found the bottom. We're up to nine dollars and five cents. Um, obviously, still uh, quite the fall from 1306. So far, not so good. Now, again, in the bigger picture of the stock market, one day means absolutely nothing. You know, if this thing bounces back, if this thing has some strong days even, but if it has strong weeks, strong months, strong quarters, strong years, um, you know, none of this will be remembered. This could be, uh, you know, for people who believe in Grab and think that, you know, it was value, it valued fairly at its IPO or maybe even, you know, more so that it's valued fairly now, um, you could just be getting the company on sale. You could be getting at a good deal. If you still believe in the company, if you, you know, look at their numbers and you believe in everything that they have going on, everything going forward in the future, you know, again, Losing a little bit of money one day doesn't really matter, but um, 
obviously, if you look at some of the other SPACs, this could be the start of something much, much worse. It's never a good sign um, to make a bad first impression with investors and, and you know, leave uh, a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths, especially people who are willing to, um, you know, invest their hard earned dollars with your company. Uh, obviously, you'd much rather have things go very, very well um, and, and, you know, be that largest SPAC ever that succeeded and had an awesome day and made a bunch of people a bunch of money and made themselves a bunch of money. Not the largest SPAC ever that uh, was down 21% the first day lost a bunch of people a bunch of money and then you know people never came back obviously that would not be great um Grab ranked at number 16 on last year's CNBC Disruptor 50 list. Obviously, you know, finding that big disruptive company is always something that people are going to, uh, you know, talk about when they talk about like, oh, uh, Tesla, you know, they were so disruptive in the, uh, you know, motor vehicle space or electric vehicle space and they're leading this new wave, this new era, yada, yada, yada. And it's like, yeah, that's awesome. And if you can find a disruptor, yes, that is where a lot of money can be made. But, um, you know, as far as disruptors go, for every Tesla, there's, um, you you know, a Nikola or a Rivian or, or whatever, um, there's going to be a lot of them that are more unsuccessful than successful. So, you know, they're number 16 on CNBC's list. I don't know if that's high enough to really, you know, make a big splash, but they sell an array of digital services such as transportation, food delivery, hotel bookings, online banking, mobile payments, and insurance services from their app, earning the super app title. I mean, yeah, that seems like a pretty super app. It seems like they have a lot of different stuff going on, but obviously, um, you know, when you look at some of this stuff like hotel bookings, um, maybe even so transportation in some ways. Uh, some of this stuff is definitely going to be affected by COVID, the pandemic, uh, especially the new, you know, Omicron variant or whatever the heck is going on, you know, today or tomorrow or whatever's coming next. Um, but some of that stuff, you know, should be booming, uh, especially during the COVID pandemic as well. But again, at a price where, you know, we have fears of raising interest rates and, and, and not even knowing what's going to happen next for the economy and, and fears of more lockdowns or more death or more illnesses or whatever. Um, it's not exactly the best time, you know, to be a speculative growth company to be a hype company, anything like that. Um, but here we are. It operates in most of Southeast Asia, serving more than 187 million users. But still, here's obviously the bad part. Revenue at the company was down 9% year over year as net losses expanded to 988 million up from 621 million. So, um, you know, if you're looking at companies to invest in, I and most other people are not really, uh, you know, looking to invest in companies that are not only not growing, but are shrinking down 9% year over year. Now, you know, I don't know how much of that is affected by COVID, how much of their numbers were inflated last year, thanks to COVID, how much of them were affected this year, whatever, you know, I'd have to dive more into it. But if you're also telling me that your net losses are close to a billion dollars, uh, you know, that is not necessarily super, super attractive either, especially being up from 600 million. That is a big increase. Those are big, big, big numbers. And those are going to be very, very difficult numbers to overcome as well. So, um, obviously, uh, you know, that is definitely something that, uh, you know, you need to keep in mind before getting involved with a company like this. And obviously something that could definitely be scaring, uh, the company or, or, you know, potential investors right now, especially as more people start to learn about this company, more people start to dive into it. I don't know. But again, could they turn things around? Could big growth be ahead of them? You know, could uh, they be on the brink of turning things around? Yeah, whatever. But at least for me personally, for the time being, I'm staying away from a company with, you know, numbers and financials and growth and everything year over year uh, numbers looking like this. But, uh, you know, maybe you think differently. I don't know. I'm not giving financial advice or anything. Just giving my thoughts and opinions on, on the stock and the news and what's going on in the market. But that is pretty much it for this video today, guys. Tell me drop a like if you did enjoy it. I would appreciate it so, so much. Uh, leave a comment down below. Let me know what uh, you think about GRAB. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts and opinions. Subscribe to today and all my latest content. Hope to catch you guys in the next one. But until then, peace.